prefer Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, as always, it is an honour to rise in this House to speak on behalf of my riding and my constituents, and perhaps particularly uh, more so today with such an important infrastructure project, uh, with such importance to my riding. Speaker, uh, the bill is uh, titled Prioritize the Expansion of the Bruce Crozier Way, and it simply is that, that simple. It's about prioritizing this last phase, the third phase of Highway 3, uh, and it is uh, also uh, a promise that I made to my community during the last election to fight uh, for the completion of this phase of the highway. Uh, and I'm happy to use my first private member slot since the election to do so. So uh, it's something that uh, I want to see, that our community wants to see this government finish what they started. Speaker, the stretch from Leamington to Windsor on Highway 3 is about a 50 kilometer stretch. Uh, historically, it was a two lane highway, and my predecessor, Bruce Crozier, a man who held the seat for 17 years, uh, saw, saw it fit to fight and to lobby the government as a member of the government to widen that highway. He, ha he garnered large support from community members, uh, stakeholders, businesses, uh, and municipalities for that endeavor, and uh, he was successful. He, uh, he, he, he committed a large portion of his career to ensuring that uh, that link, that vital uh, thoroughway, uh, was completed, and, and it was aptly named for him, uh, unfortunately, after he retired and after he passed. However, uh, Speaker, it's come to the attention of myself and to our community that the plan has changed. In 2006, the government had approved this project, and it promised that it would be completed by 2014, 2015, but now we're seeing that the government is potentially poised to delay the project and potentially by a generation. The, we know that the greenhouse industry, Speaker, in Leamington, Kingsville, uh, and southwestern Ontario, the winery industry, we have dozens of world-class wines that are in operation. The tourism industry, the, the, the uh, Ear, P P Keeley Island, Erie Coast uh, Peninsula is really a wonderful uh, burgeoning tourism destination and something that uh, requires connectivity and something that requires good, uh, good infrastructure. This is vital to that reason, to, to our region. It's a, an integral component to our growth. And if there was ever an area in Ontario that we know requires economic generation and stimulus, it is southwestern Ontario. Windsor and Essex County have, unfortunately, uh, the highest unemployment rate in the province. That's not a distinction that we like, but despite our efforts to, uh, to do the right thing and to, to attract those jobs, we're not feeling as though we have a, a partner, especially when it comes to the infrastructure needs uh, of this highway. Speaker, the EA, the environmental assessment, was, was performed in 2006 as it was granted for this project. The Highway 3 expansion was split into three phases. Phase 1 and Phase 2 are completed, and they are wonderful. They're double-laned and uh, they provide smooth transit for uh, commuters to, who are coming into Windsor. They also link up to what we all know now today as uh, being named the uh, Gordie Howe Bridge. Now we can argue whether that's appropriately named, the new bridge that will cross uh, from Windsor into Detroit, uh, but however that link, that Highway 3 link, connects to the Herb Gray Parkway, which then will connect to the Gordie Howe Bridge. It's, uh, it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to allow us to, to grow uh, and to blossom, uh, no pun intended in reference to our greenhouse industry, but they desperately need this connectivity. And when you get to the point where phase two is ended, uh, you find a massive bottleneck. It's an 80 kilometer highway and people hit that 80 kilometers at 100 and you know, 10, as we typically drive on 80 kilometer highways. So we need that widening not only for connectivity for uh, our growth, economic growth needs, but there are incredible safety implications uh, that demand that we do this and do this now. Unfortunately, Speaker, I introduced a, a petition uh, signed by many members of our community two weeks ago, and three hours later, a rollover accident claimed the lives of two, two to uh, two people on that stretch of highway, the exact same stretch that I'm speaking of. It, it was a, a terrible uh, example of why we need this, but all the more reason for the government to act swiftly, to deliver what they promised on. Speaker, you know, I come from a region where we value uh, the, 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 the virtue of, you know, doing what you say you're going to do. When you say you're going to do something, do it. And if you can't do it, come up with a good reason. Tell us why you can't do it. 
But if you're going to do something, stay true to your word. And uh, that certainly is what Bruce did. He fought and dedicated uh, his life to doing that. And I don't know if there are any members in here that sat with Bruce. Yes. So you remember him. He was a consummate politician. He was, a, he was an incredible gentleman. And despite our, of course, he had the bow tie. We know the quintessential bow tie. Uh, but uh, he taught me a lot. You know, he taught me a lot about how to be a good politician. I learned from him, although I never had the chance to let him know that. I really did. And, uh, you know, he, he was well respected across party lines. You don't get elected for 17 years running without doing what you say you're going to do. And, Speaker, when I took up the, the challenge, when I made the promise to my community to do that, I did so not only as their representative, but as, uh, as, as, a, as, as what I think Bruce would want me to do. You know, if I started something as a member, and wasn't able to finish it, I would hope, it would be my hope that the person that came next to me, despite their partisan affiliation, would actually endeavor to, to try to finish that work and would continue that work. Uh, not, you know, don't do it for me, but do it because at least they know that, that I had the support of my community in trying to, to accomplish that. This is one of the main impetuses for this bill, Speaker. It's certainly something that, that, uh, that we know is needed. It's something that Bruce fought for be from the beginning of his tenure in 1993, something that is widely uh, supported by municipalities. There are uh, letters of endorsement that I've sent to the Minister from the County of Essex that support my motion. Uh, Mayor John Patterson in Essex, Mayor Essex Deputy Mayor Richard Malosh expressed frustration at the recent announcement asking why the plan doesn't include the long promised expansion of the road to four lanes. Now here's maybe a point that I didn't raise or I forgot to raise. The MTO has recently uh, initiated a, uh, they're, they're going to resurface the portion the, at the bottleneck portion. So we're going to have that phase three resurfaced which gives us concern. Why would we resurface a road that is already built in or is planned to be doubled and widened? We will then be wasting money. You're going you're gonna to lay down asphalt and you are, uh, uh, this, I know according to the plan, you'll have to rip it up by 2018 if you're going to fulfill your commitment under the, under the Southern Highways plan. That's our concern is that by resurfacing, the signal is that we will lose this doubling of the last phase for a generation. We can't afford that. Our community can't afford it. Our small businesses can't afford it. Our tourism area can't afford it. And certainly the safety of commuters on that highway don't deserve it. We deserve what we were promised by this government, and that's what this motion is today. Fulfill your promise, finish what Bruce started, and deliver vital infrastructure to southwestern Ontario. Speaker, uh, the greenhouse industry in Leamington is at this very moment ready to invest a half a billion dollars in our area, boosting the economy by something like $580 million a year. But the greenhouse industry has said that expansion requires expanded infrastructure, particularly hydro, but also highway capacity. Uh, Ms. Wynne challenged the agriculture industry to double its growth rate and create 120 job, uh, 120,000 jobs rather, by 2020. Well, we need some help if we are going to do that in our agriculture heartland. Uh, Speaker Ron McDermott, Ron McDermott, tout. A shout out to Tout, the mayor of Essex, uh, said that the agriculture industry is going full bore right now. Quote, uh, the agriculture industry is going full bore and we're getting things over to the states. There's major need to expand out this way with the four lane highway. And as I had mentioned, the town of Essex passed a motion on May the 4th in support of uh, my call to, uh, to widen this link. Speaker, I know that uh, the government is, uh, you know, under uh, various forms of duress, whether it's teachers who are protesting or the need to find, uh, you know, dollars anywhere. However, this is a promise that is not linked to the 2014 budget. It isn't linked to the 2011 budget or the 2008 budget. This is a promise that was made in 2006. And today when I asked the question of the Minister of Transportation, he seemed offended that I would even ask the question that we, need, we want you to finish the job. He seemed offended that, uh, you know, my goodness, why would you even ask the question? <laughs> it's been since 2006, how much more time do you need, Minister, to complete this for our region? How many more roads are out there that have not been completed or will not find uh, the funding that is being promised or being touted by uh, the government? That's our major concern. Speaker, you know, in, uh, in lobbying for this widening and seeking uh, support, I reached out to 
uh, Joan Crozier. Joan is Bruce's wife. And I wanted to chat with her, as I uh, always appreciate doing, just to get her sense and to get her, really to get her, uh, her, her, her validation that I was on the right path. And she certainly uh, agreed that this was something that Bruce would want me to do and would want our community uh, to have. So uh, I want to thank her for her, uh, you know, her acknowledgement and for her support on this. Uh, I also want to thank all of the, uh, the, the members of our various municipalities who for a long time have pushed the government to give, an, give us an answer on whether this highway was going to be completed. Speaker, I've taken up 12 minutes of this debate. It shouldn't really take more than two minutes. Are you going to give us what you, do, what you promised? Are you going to deliver 